This is the willow swale, it's the first swale that we dug on the property and it's where we grow willow. And you can see catkins are out, so it's time to propagate this. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut all of the willow down pretty much at ground level. We're going to cut it down into foot to two foot sections. We're going to put mulch down, uh, we've got bi uh, biodegradable mulch mat and then we're going to punch through that down, it'll hold the mulch mat in place and we're going to duplicate the amount of willow we've got by maybe five or six times. Let's get started. So using this one as an example, you can see where it was cut here last year. That's not perfect, uh, but we're trying to save on mulch for one year. So these were just cut, you can see where it was cut. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take them off individually with the secateurs, but then we're going to take a saw and we're going to cut that at the base. So what happens otherwise is it puts out loads of shoots like this from each point that goes vertical that then becomes a flag and it really moves in the wind it puts a lot of pressure down here on the base whereas if i cut it down there uh, it'll regenerate loads of shoots from that point but they'll all be supported at ground level it'll cause less of a problem further down now this one isn't actually too bad you can see there's a certain amount of movement there but some of the bigger ones further along the swale is causing quite a problem right let's get all this cut so that's this year's willow for the willow swale planted. At this end where they were more developed, I cut them like this one here. You can see, you can see how thick that is. That's a, a decent little tree that. So we took the thinner stuff off and that's gone down there, which I'll show you in a minute. But the thicker sections, we did saw them off and they've just been shoved in about a foot long. Um, same here and all the way along here, most of these a decent thickness cuttings so about an inch or two thick at least so we've left them out um, the hope is that we won't get too much uh, vole damage with them but we just don't know but we did have a lot of vole damage in previous years and these have been hit quite badly but i think it's most of that damage will have been from late last year before the uh, the weasel that we've got living on site now really got stuck into the rodent population so these again that is a cutting that's just been shoved in but uh, that is where it was cut from you can see i've cut them fairly flush so that'll put out a massive new shoots and as we get down to the the thinner stuff right now here i use this biodegradable mulch and then here i haven't i want to be able to compare the two and see if it really is worth using it now willow it's it roots really readily but one of the things it can suffer from is grass competition if the grass overtakes it it's going to struggle and chances are it's, you know it's accident chance it'll die uh, before it gets a chance to get established um, so this is just to give it a bit of a head start i mean in an ideal world i'd put a foot of wood chip over the lot but you know that's not something we get free it has a cost and i've got other uses for it i'd rather prioritize but we'll see how it goes with this um and then we'll compare it to the non-mulched bit and see if that does any good because in previous years we've used no mulch at all um we're not putting mulch collars on sorry uh rodent collars on because i'm hoping that uh, the shrews will leave it be uh, for the reasons i've just explained uh yeah the weasel is amazing um, we don't have a rat problem anymore that's for sure it's uh, it's a very very effective predator so this is a bulls hybrid willow it's a biomass crop uh, eventually, like next year for example, if these come up again and do their thing, we'll complete the gap up to the end of the swale next year, and then the year after we'll go and complete a long, and it's a long swale, and uh, it'll give us a lot of very thin stickwood that we can eventually um, see that way south. So this will grow up during the summer, it'll give us a certain amount of uh, privacy in the garden, you know, we've got a hot tub planned for this year. <laughs> if we've got customers in, they really don't need to see me in the hot tub for their view. That's not anyone's idea of a, a pleasant view for the holiday. So, yeah, uh, this will give us privacy. And then the autumn, we cut it down from dry it for the next winter for biomass for the uh, rocket mass heater. And eventually, there's going to be a decent sized greenhouse here. So that in the summer, when it's growing here, all along this swale, it won't provide won't cast any shade because of the higher sun but after we've chopped it in the winter the sun will be able to get into the greenhouse and it's really nice and close to the house so it's really easy to come out and harvest it um so yeah that's another year's growth for the uh the biomass willow 
right we've got one more type of willow that we're gonna propagate and uh, put in as cuttings today and those are cuttings that we were given over winter when someone was chopping one down so let's go have a look at that as you can see there's a big bundle of osier willow that we were given in the winter so we just shoved it in this bucket in the corner of the garage out of the way and then forgot about it until about a month ago so we're going to stick them in now so there's the bundle out of the water now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that in half, divide it in half and I'm going to put half down here now here is next to the car park I'm going to put a row of them there and a row of them there and as they get up and bigger and some of these have already taken um, I think we've put three or four different generations of willow in down here that's what all these sticks are and some of them will take and some of them won't and once we've got enough we'll start weaving them together and they'll as they come up so that I'll go back away and show you so that's a view going up the track to go up the pods there'll be a nice willow arch formed above to walk through and we'll put another one at the far end just this side of the barn so that's the first batch in now it's to the top of the field to do the second lot after that I'm going to do some elder uh, with a similar kind of technique but uh, yeah first things first well so you can see where they've been shoved in I've got a line of them here all the way along quite dense another line of them there and that'll tie in you can see there's the red willow that will make up a willow fedge running up as far as this post here and then this willow here and that willow there as they grow up they'll be woven together like a simple plait and when they're tall enough in a couple of years we'll have an archway going over from both sides and there'll be a nice willow arch here now you can see some of last year's took but uh, they went in quite late so they didn't do fantastically well but they did survive so that's the important thing but you see they were quite small cuttings as well now a lot of these are likely to die back to about a foot or so there's no guarantee that the whole length will take but sometimes they do and because we've got quite a bit of material that's what I've done is just shove them in at the whole length um, rather than trying to maximize the number of cuttings from them uh, so that if they do take we'll have pretty close by maybe next year if you'll be in a position to start doing it uh, and weaving them together because if you tie them together and get them to connect they will actually fuse like a like a graft and, uh, and become a fairly dense fairly strong structure that you can see even with allowing for a certain amount of spread on both directions that's still nice and wide we could get uh, like a quad bike and trailer or we could get a wheelbarrow or we could get a wheelchair for that matter through um, we are as far as possible making the whole state uh, wheelchair friendly as we go uh, some of it will take a little bit of improvement as we go but we haven't done anything to actually you know limit that so we can do it all later if we choose to which we will so yeah that is the willow arch there's another one down at that end which I just showed you where I dumped the first lot but because there's so many rushes still down there you can't really see as clearly uh, what we're doing with it so that's the willow done right next up is the uh, elder the elderberry so this is an elder cutting that was shoved in last year just as a basic stick see it's just starting to bud out here's another one that just started to bud out it's not quite as reliable as willow but it's pretty good um, and it seems to be that the bigger the stick the better it takes you can see that one didn't take but even then sometimes they come back at the base so I wouldn't rule it out just yet they can be quite surprising but yeah that one seems to be dead but uh, yeah they're surprising how many of them take but you can see here that we've got a big long row of them coming all the way through until we get to this point here now we didn't put any beyond this point and here we've got a hazel it's just starting to bud out as well so the spring is definitely on its way but we didn't bring any through here because at the time that we were having the pods delivered we weren't sure whether we were going to get them up the track there or whether we we're going to bring them through this way and use a neighbor's track who very kindly gave us permission to so uh, as it goes we don't really need this to be kept clear anymore so we've got a few things in here we've got that's uh, 
Ali Agnes Ebbingy, uh, Ebbing Silverberry. Really good windfast trees. Just starting to drop its leaves now as the new ones come out. See, there's another one there. There's another one there. Um, this, I think, is elm. I think that one. So we've got a few trees up here. But you can see there's still quite a big run here where there's none at all. So we're going to use this elder. We're going to shove that in just like we did with the willow and see how many of them take. And we should do quite well. Uh, we'll probably get, I don't know, 10, 15 cuttings out of that lot. So let's get them shoved in. So that's it done. We've got, I don't know, 20 or so cuttings in. See, some are already starting to leaf out. These leaves will die off. Um, there's no roots to support them, so they don't last. But that's no big deal. Um, they'll probably leaf out again yet. And roughly 40, 50% of them will take. I'm not sure how well they're coming up on camera, but you can see, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, generally, the bigger the stick that went in, the more substance it has. So these that are quite low, they're attached to a chunk about yay big. So, and probably about a foot or so long. So more of these will take than these thin ones, but still, that's pretty good. And being up here next to our neighbor's barn, we tend to find, see there's feral cat droppings, and there, there's feral cat droppings. So yeah, there's a lot of predation going on up here. So we haven't got to worry too much about uh, shrew damage or vole damage, but uh, they don't seem to bother much with elder anyway. I think it's a fairly unpleasant wood for them. It's, uh, it's toxic to humans, so it's probably not particularly good for any mammal. So yeah, that is today's free tree plantings.